scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart this large electric baseboard heater. I know it's hard to think about heaters right now given that it is summertime, but it just goes to show that you can find anything and everything on garbage day regardless of time of year and uh, weather. And these are an excellent score and I do find heaters and fans a lot uh, throughout the year. This is going to be 100% scrappable, a lot of tin, there's a really nice appliance cord, some copper inside, some brass and aluminum, and again, very easy to take apart. So I'm going to do that in this video. I do also want to just quickly touch on this baseboard heater. This is one of the older styles, and I commonly find these at old houses or renovation sites. People are getting rid of them. And I do actually have a video on a full breakdown of one of these, and I will include the link in my description. The only reason I wanted to show this one is because most of these um, do have inside of them the heating coil that has a lot of aluminum plates or fins that go down it. Those are very easy to take off with a grinder and get clean aluminum price. But this one, I actually just found it. It does have the same tin shell, lots of copper, but this is the heating element. And what you can see, if I put a magnet to it, it does not stick to any of this. Even the top uh, parts here that connect to the heating coil, these heating coils do go all the way through. You can see those two tubes there. But because this is non-magnetic, I'm just going to cut the two tips off of here. I'm going to leave it as is. And I'm actually going to get clean aluminum price for this. Uh, and that currently right now is going for 61 cents a pound. And this easily weighs 12, 13 pounds. So an excellent score. And it just goes to show that there are different styles out there and different models. But all of these 100% scrappable. And again, I will include the link in my description to the full breakdown of one of these traditional baseboard heaters. This one that you see here, a little bit more modern. It is a stand-up type. It does have a really nice appliance cord, and I did cut this off. I will get the rest of it in there. But this right now, uh, going as 40% appliance wire, this is currently going for $1.50 a pound Canadian in London, Ontario. Uh, the price just went up five cents. I just checked about five minutes ago. So great price for this. You can see inside does have three cables. And the reason this is gonna be 40% uh, not 60%, is because that middle wire there does have extra coating on it. If that did not have extra coating and all three of them were single strand like the two on the outside, it would be 60% appliance wire. Uh, and I will easily upgrade this. All I actually do is I will split this um, and with a uh, type of side cutter you see there because they are connected. And all I'm actually gonna do to upgrade this, neat little trick, is I'm just gonna pull that, look at that. So just gonna pull this and these two wires on the outside here now, and even this one, this inner one, I just made all three of them upgraded from $1.50 at 40% appliance wire to now going for 60% appliance wire and that currently is $2.45 a pound. So almost a dollar more for two seconds of work. So. A lot of tips and tricks. Uh, yes, unfortunately, the only drawback is this small little inner cord here is gonna be garbage, but this doesn't weigh anything. Uh, and there is definitely going to be a pound and a bit here. So great score for sure, but you never know the little tips and tricks that you're going to discover along the way. Hopefully that helped. Uh, and again, that only works when it has the three cords like that and the one inner one is extra coated. So just a small little cut there easy to upgrade this. The rest of this shell here, it did have screws on the bottom that I did have to remove. Uh, I have my screws right here. And it did also have right here two security uh, screws or bolts. You will find them on a lot of um, items, especially now. Uh, they are put there for safety purposes, a lot of microwaves. And those little bolts that you see there, they're called security bolts because they have inside of them a small little nub. So buying one of these L key sets, this is just a security set, has come in tremendous help for me. They are very handy, inexpensive. It only costs $10 and I use it all the time. So it just has, you can see inside, 
uh, like an Allen head, but it has uh, circles inside of it. Those do open up, will uh, attach to the little nub and it will open them. Some people do hit them off with a grinder, but for me, easier using that. So an L key security set, okay? Just has a little bit of plastic on the side. I am just gonna put it right back on after I'm done. Uh, and there are two little screws that were kind of hidden on the side. Just gonna get those last two to open this up, okay? This whole frame, you can see, is gonna be, it's magnetic, so it is gonna give me tin price. Currently, right now, tin is going for 10 to 14 cents a pound in London, Ontario, uh, as well as all of southwestern Ontario, so an excellent price for sure. It, I, I'm just amazed that it has stayed at such a high level, high price, so it's great. Um, just going to actually put my safety glass on, hit this last end out. Don't want anything flying up at me. There we go. Okay, so inside of here, I'm gonna just quickly open it. There is a little bit more cord that I have, so I just wanna work my way getting that out. And I also just gonna slide this whole thing if I can. It might be attached. Uh, it is attached, so just gonna see if I can pry this head off or open this up. Sometimes it is better just with a hammer, but just going to quickly start by taking off the ends. There is a lot of wire that goes through this. There are some screws that I can see just on the side. Okay, so this head is going to have, you can see, a circuit board. It does have a lot of copper wire inside of it. So I'm going to open this quickly. There is a nice metal plate here. So just going to grab my screwdriver. Where did I put it? There it is. I'm going to open this first. Okay, and all of this shell is going to give me tin price. So great, great, great item here for sure. I have a big load of tin going out very soon. Uh, tomorrow actually. So this is just going to add to the pile. Um, hopefully there's about 400 pounds already. I just brought in another load uh, last week. So just goes to show it adds up very, very quickly. Okay, so a couple items here of interest. There is, just gonna quickly get this off. There is right here in front of me a silver contact. Just have to get a smaller screwdriver to remove this. It is screwed in, so just gonna remove this. So relay boxes, common item you find on circuit boards and a lot of different appliances. These do have a little bit of silver in them, as well as some copper. I am gonna take it out and show you. This is, again, just a couple screws. Interesting, just uh, with scrapping, is trying to find the screws and open it up. They are different depending on where they're made. So, you know, there are a lot of similarities, but there are also some minor differences when you're taking this apart. So, a lot of tin here. Okay, opening up this panel here, hopefully, there it is. There's another screw. Oh, and that has the security screw because they don't want you tampering with it inside there. So, here is my handy dandy set coming into use again. Make sure I find this. There we go. So, there you go. You never know what set you're going to use and what pieces of equipment, but it's very cheap and as you're scrapping you know i pick up stuff on the way so there is my face plate a uh, couple screws in there not going to open this but lots of my uh 60 wire here there is right here on this a couple uh relay boxes as well so they do come in different sizes i am actually just going to remove the screws so i can take this out for you and show you okay so there is my control panel made a little bit different obviously than the older styles um, but, uh, you know, these are still good. Uh, the rest of that, even though I'm going to take those three boxes off of there, I'm still going to get e-waste price uh, or circuit board price for the rest of that, uh, which is only about five cents a pound, but it's better than nothing. Okay, the small little circuit board that you're going to see at the top here, if I can remove it, does have a little couple small silver buttons. And I don't do much with these buttons. Uh, I don't recover the silver out of that because it is very small, but um, you know, it, it does have to depend on you know how much scrapping and 
micro scrapping I'm gonna do, but just gonna quickly open this. Last one, last box, just to show you the circuit board on this one. Uh, these ones, especially when it comes to push buttons like that, you are gonna find those a lot on, um, you can find microwaves, a lot of different um, uh, tap clip button, a lot of washing machines, uh, dryers, anything that has push buttons uh, that is more like um, a plastic panel over top, uh, but you can hear that little popping sound when you push the buttons. So those are little, little traces of silver on those, but again, I don't recover that silver. I just bring them in as circuit boards and Okay, this is, again, gonna have lots of screws on it, so I'm not even gonna bother opening that. I'm just gonna leave it as is and bring it in as, as uh, e-waste as is, leave the plastic on there. But here, these ones right here, that is a capacitor, okay? And I leave that capacitor on, but these two right here, squares, are relay boxes. They have a small little bit of copper inside of it. Um, but the one here that you see, this anytime that you have a clicking noise, there's that clicking noise. So this is the side profile of one of those relay boxes. Inside of that, you can see a couple prongs. And those prongs, if you take them out, sometimes they're brass, sometimes they're copper. But that little smudge that you see on there is a little bit of silver. So I do cut that off and put it into a vial. The rest of this wire, again, I am gonna put into my 60% recovery. I do have to pull off these knobs. And what I do is I will actually just, if I can't unscrew them, I will cut the back of this. I'll put these heads right into my mix wire uh, because I don't wanna get downgraded. If I throw it in with this plastic head, I'm gonna get downgraded um, at the scrapyard. So all I do is I will bring the wire in and get the 60% appliance wire. But a nice score there inside of here. Okay, I am gonna try and open this. And all this talk about heaters, I think that's what's making me hot. But just gonna see if I can open that. I did remove the safety screws, but it is pinched inside. I can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna see how I can get in there. There are a couple screws that are, are gonna keep me out, so it's not gonna be as easy as I thought, but I'm gonna see if I can just bang this open. This way, it's just on a track, there we go, okay? So the rest of this shell, not even gonna open, just gonna throw this right in, it's all tin inside of it, you can see it's hollow, but again, this is probably a good six, seven pounds of tin. This right here, the heating element, I do wanna see if what kind of metal it is, so just gonna quickly put a magnet to it. Here's my magnet, it is magnetic, so this is all just gonna actually be uh, stainless steel, magnetic stainless steel. If I touch these heating elements and they were non-magnetic, um, they could either be good stainless steel, which is going for about 77 cents a pound, or aluminum. The way I'm gonna check is the spark test. If I hit these with a grinder and it sparked, it would be good stainless steel. If I hit it with a grinder and it didn't spark and it was non-magnetic, it means that it would be clean aluminum. So spark test, is the best test to see if it is a st good stainless steel or aluminum because both are non-magnetic, but aluminum does not spark. So all of this, I'm actually just gonna leave as is as well. I am gonna pull these wires. You can see right here, there is a little silver contact. So you can see right there, that piece where my finger is, see that little nub there, that does have brass, but on that is a little dot of silver as well. So there's actually two of them right there. There's one and there's the other that you see. So I will pull these off as well as this wire, but the rest of this, just gonna throw it right into my tin, okay? So a nice piece here. Again, got that appliance wire, excellent score. Showed you how to upgrade, okay? For me, again, I also take the brass prongs, but easy way to upgrade this from 40% appliance wire to 60 if it has the three wires and the one in the middle is the only one that has extra wrapping of plastic. So again, it does depend on the type of wire, but all appliance wire is a great item. And you do wanna make sure you separate them as you go along, your 40% and your 60%, just saves you 
hours of time. I did it on, uh, when I first started, uh, made the mistake, did it all the night before scrapyard run, and it took me a number of hours. So I do have two different bags, separate, but easy way to upgrade this. Great amount of tin, a little bit of brass, a little bit of silver, a couple of relay boxes, and again, 100% diverted from the landfill. Find them anytime, even in the summer heat. Uh, so great items. Again, I will put the other older style link in my description. Go check that one out. Hope you enjoyed that. Please continue with the comments and questions, people asking me for uh, new ideas or how to do things. I am trying my best to hopefully answer all those questions. Uh, so keep them coming. Look forward to scrapping. Happy scrapping. Stay well. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.